Hey, today we got a very special guest on our show. Let's see if he's ready to go fishing. I hear fish schooling. Back to jumping now. <laughs> I believe this schooling. There's our special guest of the day. <laughs> I think he's ready. I believe he just dreamed about catching nothing. How many you call out there? He got reeling him in. I see. I believe he was. We ready. University of Alabama. It's crazy. <laughs> hey, today's show is by far the most unusual show we have ever done, ever. Technology and a little bit of history. I saw there was a need for a depth finder that I could find him even better. Tom Mann, Hall of Famer, changed the face of fishing, had such an impact on my life. Uh, I, I want to look back at my hero, my buddy, the late, great Tom Mann. And we're only a few miles from Ufall, Alabama, where we're doing this show today. And it's going to be a hoot. There are two kids and they're fishing off of this big barge and they can't get on this roadbed and they're watching me catch a fish every cast. So I said, guys, what are y'all doing tomorrow? Well, we'd like to figure out how to get out there on that roadbed. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put you guys in the front of this boat so I can sit back here in the back seat, watch my side imaging and know right where the roadbed is, maintain the boat with all this new, incredible, crazy technology that Minn Kota and Humminbird have developed. These two guys that you're gonna meet today go to the University of Alabama, so we're gonna call this show the Alabama Challenge. Stay with me, I'm Hank Parker. Have you ever been in a boat before? Not many times. <laughs> Not many times. And how old are you? 20. 20? Yes, how old are you? 20? Yes, hey, we got something in common. I used to be 20. <laughs> Real. <laughs> All right, this is about instruction. I'm going to see how good a student you are. This is all about being able to follow instructions to catch fish. <laughs> hey, today's show is so neat. Chandler and Stenson were out there fishing the day before when I was on the water. It was close, and that could work. And they were in this big barge, and the wind was blowing them. They had inferior electronics, to say the least. All right, one little jerk is all you got to do. But we got to work on that. But Stinson has fished here before, so he's going by memory on where this structure is. I said, guys, what are y'all doing tomorrow? They said, well, we're going to try to get our big barge out there and get anchored down on the spot. Well, it's a roadbed, and this roadbed goes for about 300 yards. So it's really no spot to anchor on. I mean, you may anchor on a spot for a minute and catch three or four, but then you move on. No pumping. So Stinson, he and his buddy Chandler both go to the University of Alabama. I said, tomorrow, why don't I put you in the front of my boat? You guys, you can use my loose rods and reels. You'll have better equipment than you've ever used in your life. And uh, I will run the trolling yeah, motor. control? It's crazy what they got these days. I'm using an Ultrex trolling motor. Now let me tell you about a motor-driven <laughs> trolling motor. Seriously, get the glasses. They don't work because bass fishermen fish by feel. You feel where that pedal is. You don't, you're not constantly looking. If it's motor driven, you're gonna be all over the place. Nice size, eh? So when they told me they were gonna develop this new trolling motor, oil tracks, I said, you can't do it. They said, well, what if we could make a motor drive 
be just like power steering on a car where the feel is the same, it's just easier, and it's turned by a motor, but it will feel exactly like a cable. I said, there's no way you can do that. Now, bless your little heart, you was out here trying to tread water yesterday, you couldn't <laughs> set the hook, now look what you've done. Now I got them. <laughs> All it takes is a good Ranger boat, a <laughs> rod and reel with a Berkeley Power Worm, and you're in business. That's it. Well, the one thing that I've learned about Minn Kota, you don't tell them they can't do something. They have made that motor absolutely unbelievable. It is the greatest trolling motor in the entire world, bar none, the Ultrax. So that's what I've got on my boat. It feels just like a cable. I never have to look at it. I can drive it. I'm tickled to death. And I never dreamt about a handheld device that would work my trolling motor. In my wildest dreams, I never dreamt of that. Kick back and relax. So here we got Chandler and Stinson in the front of the boat, and I'm sitting in the back seat controlling the <laughs> troll motor. It is so awesome. You got what you need? Yes, sir. Now let me tell you, keeping that boat in the right position to make that presentation was critical. And then I've got my hummingbird side imaging. I can look right there and see the road bed. So anytime I turn my boat sideways, I'm sitting there looking at the road bed. I'm 80 feet out. I'm 70 feet out. I'm perfect. So I keep these guys in perfect position, sitting in the back seat with my legs crossed while running the trolling motor by hand. Is that not good? My man. <laughs> We were catching them on drop shot, we were catching them on Carolina rig, and we were catching them on shaky head. Shaky head was the most productive. We caught some on Texas rig worm, but if you positioned the boat perfect and made the right cast and came right down that brake line, right when you got where that road bed where it just kind of leveled out, those fish were kind of in that ditch. And when you got there, you, you got a bite. You're killing it. Oh, there you go. Well, I guess it doesn't count. Didn't get in the boat. <laughs> We'll let it count. So that's what our challenge was about, was technology. Keeping the boat in place, making the right presentation. Those kids did pretty good, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, they're great fishermen. I had a bite. And for me to sit back in the back, I, I had a ball. It's the first fishing show that I ever was a part of that it didn't require me to fish. Now, I fished a little bit because I cheated. <laughs> but I cheated in fun. The rest was up to Chandler and Stinson, so it was a fun event. Justin, how long you known Chandler? Since, what, kindergarten? Time, probably, yeah, kindergarten. 15, 16 years, here we go. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh, what a big one. <laughs> was it two to four? Yep, in a ball game. Four to three. Catch Sounds up. about right. Look at the boy go. All tied up. Good <laughs> count. <laughs> For the time being. Man, what a beautiful day, beautiful lake. We're at a very special place. We're just a few miles from where Tom lives. We're at Lake Point Resort right here on the shores of Lake Eufaula, Alabama. A lot of history right here. We got more history coming up about my buddy Tom Mann. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Mercury Marine, go boldly. I saw there was a need for a depth finder that I could find them at more of a rapid pace and find them even better. This is where I came with the Hummingbird. I had 22 years at Hummingbird, but I had a little advantage because I was with Tom Mann for five years before I went to Hummingbird. The Super 60 was the standard. Tom Mann 
branded that thing and got it going and was to Tom's credit, it was the only unit with a personality. I fished the hummingbird for the next 20 years. I hope you will enjoy many, many honey holes like I have the last 40 years. <laughs> uh, we are standing on sacred ground, the banks of Lake Eufaula. When I was 17 years old, I saw a cover shot of Blake Honeycutt on Bassmaster Magazine. He had a big stringer of bass, 138 pounds of bass. Now I was 17 years old and completely eaten alive with fishing. My goal in life was to catch an eight pound bass. Blake had a whole string full, it was just amazing. Well I open up the magazine and there's Tom Mann and Blake Honeycutt talking about using sonar to find underwater structure. They didn't catch these bass out of lily pads and grass like I did. Underwater structure, islands, road beds, points, all kinds of creek channels using sonar. A thing called a hummingbird. Man, I had to have a hummingbird. That was the largest selling number one flasher unit. And at the time, uh, we hit the million mark and it was a great, great story. Hey, we got more about my buddy Tom Mann, so don't go away, we'll be right back. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. I have been created by many people that I put you fall on the map. A lot of people put you fall on the map. I have a lot of my old friends that helped put you fall on the map. And you fall is no doubt the best capital of the world. You know, <laughs> to me, I understood Tom. I understood his brilliance. I understood how sharp he was because I got to hang around him. And I've been wanting to do a tribute to him for so long. You know, the first guest I ever had on a television show was my buddy Tom Mann. He wasn't big enough to get in the mall. No, he was sitting <laughs> on top of the mall, sad boy. But look at him, he's just an old laid back country boy from Eufaula, former game warden, came up with an idea for a hummingbird depth finder, pouring a jelly worm. Uh, he and Miss Ann poured jelly worms in their kitchen. And you just look at that and you look where we are. I just wish he was still with us where we could say, Tom, look what you've done. And, uh, and then you got the Super 60, of course, which was, the Hummingbird was trademarked, but also Tom Mann's signature was on it. So he was something. That right there changed the face of fishing forever. It's amazing. I'm afraid of pick where you want to go and we just walk around and uh, show you a little bit of what, about what we're doing here with the, what's the latest and greatest. How special is that? But Tom was a laid back country guy that was a fox. I mean, he, he had it all figured out. And uh, more than being a great fisherman, more than being a, a brilliant business mind, more than any of that, he was my buddy. I just wish we could go fishing one more time. We're entering into the third quarter, and the score is eight to eight. The tiebreaker goes to Chandler with the biggest fish. Oh, the pressure's on Stimson Slauson Jr. <laughs> You're killing yourself throwing that high. Hank's show is made possible in part by Lou's. Feel the difference. And by Minn Kota. Soft Science. Solar Bat. And Talon. Two minute grill. Oh, I got too excited. Oh, no, I'm making a big push. Woo! I'm gonna be 
and they're both his rigs. Crazy day. I know. We're running out of time, so Stetson Slauson Jr. is behind by two fish. Down by three. I had more fun with these guys, and if you notice, they got quiet. <laughs> But they were wanting to win, and we didn't do weight of the fish. It, it, we'd have had to weigh them, and we didn't have all the equipment to do it. Just, so we just went by numbers. And yes, I cheated. I, I wanted it to be a tie where we could go to overtime. That's really what I was trying to achieve. So I cheated. I, I did hook a, a fish or two for Stinson. So Chandler, I know you're watching the show, and you see right now that I'm cheating. But. I wasn't cheating, Chandler, to try to get you beat. I just wanted to tie where we could go to overtime. Dang, only down by one. I mean, it was close, but we'll have to give Chandler the nod, the shake, down by one. the salute for victory. Chandler, you still won, buddy. Victory. You're gonna be dreaming about that oh, one for a while. Oh, what yeah. a battle, 13 to 14. Boy, it was a happening and a fun show. Technology and a little bit of history. It, it was so much fun. You know, it's so good to look back and give Tom a shout out who is such a foundation to the sport of fishing. Proud of Tom and his memory. Uh, it, it'll always be in my mind forever. What, what a great guy. And the fun we had with the new Ultrax trolling motor, you need to check that out. The Ultrax, it just is a mind boggling development. I would have never thought they could have done that. Made power steering and it feels just like a cable driven motor. It, it is crazy and then you can run it by hand. It is some wild things happening in the development of fishing. Minn Kota is on fire, man. They're doing an awesome job. So what a fun day we had today and what great guys. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Totally different, but the Alabama Challenge is now history. Thanks for being with me. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker. And don't forget to visit us at hankparker.com, the place for tips, giveaways, and more. The house needs painting, the grass needs mowing, where's he at? Gone fishing.